Good morning, dear church family, and welcome to visitors. It is the second day of Christmas and our annual carol sing. My name is Fred Brunig. I am the Guilford Community Church moderator. Our church tradition for a number of years has been to give our pastor a well-earned break after a busy Advent and Christmas Eve. And what a glorious season it was this year that Elisa gave us in spite of the pandemic. Thank you, Elisa. There were many others who made it a wonderful season as well, but two who were instrumental in doing so were our choir directors, Peter Amidon and Andy Davis, and also Patty Meyer as well as our organist. Thank, and they are getting a break this week too. Thank you to the both, all of them. We are offering uh, this morning an edited uh, encore presentation, if you will, of last year's carol service that I led. I hope you'll enjoy seeing us all together in our beautiful sanctuary adorned with poinsettias and full of song. The one person that did not get uh, a break this week is, and uh, this is because we would be nowhere in this pandemic without him, is our videographer and editor from Brattleboro Community Television, BCTV, Austin Rice. Thank you so much, Austin, for all of the work that you do. Uh, even though you did not get a break, I did try to make it an easier editing job. We do have a couple of announcements, one from Rob Harnish. He and his wife, Jill, are Guilford's annual, uh, extraordinary meal team volunteers with Groundworks Collaborative. He will be followed by Jan Drexler, who has served the church for seven years as our clerk. This will be her last official act as clerk, and we thank her for her dedication right to the very end to read the warning for a special meeting today. I'd like to offer a little context for the warning. Most of you know that Roseanne Hebert, our Pastor Elisa's spouse, had a faith community nursing ministry in their church at St. Johnsbury. Our church council voted at its December meeting to call a special meeting of our membership to decide whether we wanted to offer that ministry here in Guilford. I hope most of you saw the information about Faith Community Nursing in our Hoverings newsletter. There's also been a series of short articles in the e-news over the last four to five weeks. If you missed any of those articles, uh, please contact me and I'll be happy to send you the ones you missed or I could send you a summary of all of them if you prefer. We hope that everyone will come to the meeting having read that material. If you have questions, please let me know those as well so that we can make sure that Roseanne will be prepared to answer them. Okay, now here's Rob. Hello, I'm here to talk about uh, Groundworks. Groundworks is currently looking for donations of food for New Year's Eve. Uh, what they need are deli platters. And uh, so they're gonna make sandwiches. They need deli platters and they need some vegetable platters but like lettuce or sliced tomatoes, some onions. And they're also looking for desserts. So if you like to bake, uh, you know, maybe a pie or some brownies or a cake, something along that lines would be great. They also are in need of some um, prepaid gift cards, $10 gift cards that they can give to their guests that stay, uh, stay with them. They can give them so they can go buy shampoo or soap or, or you know, toothpaste, tooth, whatever, whatever they may need, you know. And they're also looking for little, little uh, gift bags, uh, you know, just a little bag that maybe has a pair of socks in it or some toilet trees or something along that line. And uh, what we plan on doing is Jill will be at the church between 1 and 1.30 on New Year's Eve, and she will uh, gather up all the donations, and she will bring them over to the Quality Inn. Or if that's not good for you, you can deliver them to the Quality Inn yourself between 1 and 4. If you have any questions, you can either email me <laughs> or you can call my house, and uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Thank you. This is a legal warning for the members of the Guilford Community Church. A special meeting of the Guilford Community Church United Church of Christ will be held via Zoom on Sunday, January 10th, 2021 at 11 a.m. 
or immediately following the worship to set upon the following business. Article one, to discuss and vote on whether or not Guilford Community Church will offer faith community nursing as a ministry of the church. Article two, to conduct any other business that may illegally come before the membership. On behalf of the church, I'm Jan Dressler, wishing you a great and safe new year. Thank you, Jan. So let us begin our worship today by acknowledging and honoring this land we occupy and those First Nation people to whom the land belongs. We gather here on the bank of the broad brook, in the shadow of the great Mount Wantastiquit, in the valley of the rushing Connecticut, to worship and discern together the call of God to the United Church of Christ for these days. Let us know that we do so on the hunting grounds and homelands of the Mahican and Penacook people, as well as the southernmost members of the Abenaki tribe. These people have used this land since time immemorial and are still among us in the present. We offer them our gratitude and respect, our repentance and hope in solidarity with them. Let us say together, it is a holy communion we share of life on earth, of past and present, of pain and reconciliation, of mystery and majesty. Let us begin. Please light your candle at home while the candles are being lit in the sanctuary. So now I invite you to quiet yourselves, sit comfortably in your seats and focus your attention on the love, the light, and the peace that Christ brings into the world as we allow it to enter our souls. As the candles are lit, open your heart and welcome that love and light and peace that these candles represent. Now the call to worship will have the um, left side of the congregation read the regular font and the right side of the congregation read the bold font. Praise God! Praise the Lord from the heavens! Praise God in the heights! Praise God! and all hills, fruit trees, and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above the earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for the people and praise for all the faithful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. So we'll bring, begin our singing of praises to the Lord with Psalm, or 
hymn number 137, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please stand if you're able. seated. The, uh, just a note on that hymn, it was written by Charles Wesley in 1739, ancestor of our own Jack Wesley. Um, he never told me how many greats of a grandfather he was, but some number of it's many greats. Myth, <laughs> my, my grandmother told me so. <laughs> but one of the things that I thought was interesting about the hymn that I discovered is that uh, one writer said the inspiration of this newly of his newly made contact with God was still fresh when he wrote this when he wrote this uh, a year after his conversion. Um, rather than simply tell the nativity story, Wesley poured theological truths into his text. The text strength may not lie so much in any orderly sequence of thought, but in, in its use of scripture to teach its theology. So, a note on Charles Wesley and Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's move on to our prayer of preparation. Let us pray. When we forget you in our busyness, O oh Lord, make us mindful of your steadfast presence. When we will not look truth in the face, turn our eyes to your way. When we recoil from the harsh realities of life, open us to the suffering within and around us. When we move on in blissful ignorance, awaken in us a heart of compassion. When we're afraid to speak our minds, put into our mouths words of your justice. When we do speak our minds, but without sensitivity, help us to see others' points of view. 
when we question the very thought of you in our lives, become real to us once again through love. Please spend a moment in silent confession and meditation. Merciful and compassionate God, your greatness overwhelms us and we wonder sometimes if we are even worthy of you. But we have faith that your love is boundless and includes all of us and all of our brothers and sisters, the world around. We are grateful for another chance to try and live our lives as you would have us do. We thank you for this most incredible gift that you have given us, your son, born in this joyous season, who then died that our sins might be forgiven. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite the choir up now to sing Rolling Downward, also known as the Angel's Song. It was actually written by Robert Lowry, who's was born in 1826 and died in 1899, lived in Philadelphia. It appeared in a few hymnals beginning in the, uh, around 1875, but apparently never caught on as a church hymn. But it migrated to England and found a welcome home in the Yorkshire pub singing carol, uh, tradition, the carol singing tradition, where its rousing chorus makes it a crowd favorite and invite you to join in as you hear the chorus and learn it. Wow. 
Okay, invite the children forward at this point. And um, bring, a, bring a hymnal, because we're going to be singing the children's story as well. But the, uh, this um, service today, in lieu of a sermon, we'll, we, we'll be singing all of our praises to God and Jesus. So that includes the children's story. So I have a question for all you guys. Have any of you ever stayed up till midnight? Sometimes I do. Sometimes, Sometimes you do. How many, how many have ever stayed up till midnight? Like, have you ever stayed up till midnight? Nothing. Yeah, sometimes when it's dark, it's dark, it gets dark early these days, doesn't it? Yeah. So, well, midnight can be a, it's often a very magical time. And there's a, there's a legend, which is like a, a story that on midnight, of Christmas Eve, just as Christmas Eve turning, was turning to Christmas Day, only we didn't know it yet. Because that's when Jesus was born, right at midnight. There's, there's that legend that, hey. The, um, and that, uh, that, there's that, that story that Jesus was born right at midnight, and then that made the animals be able to speak. They could speak in human voices. There's a, well, that's the, that's the story. And that's the story. Who knows if it really happened, but if we all turn to, to uh, hymn number 143, there's a, the story of uh, the animals all talking. And this actually comes from a, from, a, from a French tradition from way long time ago, like 600 years ago, um, where, where the, um, the, donkey, the donkey that carried Mary and Joseph and Jesus into... into um, Egypt was celebrated by a feast of the donkey, and um, this song comes from that. So let's sing hymn number 143. Patty, would you like to join, join us on this?
I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 to 18. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Dear God, let the songs from our lips and the meditations of all of our hearts here today be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the, we're going to be singing in lieu of a sermon today. And I've chosen hymns that I, either we haven't sung yet this season or ones that I thought could have another go. I uh, mentioned our opening hymn from Charles Wesley. Next hymn uh, may date from the medieval period, but it was collected in Sussex in England by Ralph von Williams about 100 years ago. And so it was identified by, by the Oxford Book of Carols as the Sussex Carol, although it was pretty um, widespread in other regions. But it was first published in 1684 by an Irish bishop, Luke Wadding. So hymn number 152, the Sussex Carol, or on, Christian, on Christmas night, all Christians sing. It was a call and it's really a call and response type of hymn, but uh, we'll do it, you can sing all the parts. <laughs>
One of my favorite carols is another old one, originally published in the 1500s from the German Catholic tradition, where the rose tree was a symbol of Mary. But when the Lutherans adopted the carol, they changed the focus to be Jesus. The original carol had 19 verses, which then ballooned to 23 by the end of the century, but we'll sing the three verses that are in the hymnal, including the German one, good luck. But um, let's repeat verse one to finish. So we'll actually sing four verses. Her, number 148. Before we move on to our next carol, I'd like to insert a brief reflection on today's scripture. According to Craig Coaster, quote, the passage from Hebrews offers four ways of looking at Jesus and ourselves. He says, in any congregation, there are one, people who, people in need of a future, people in need of belonging, 
people held captive by powers beyond themselves and sinners in need of atonement. This scripture passage gives us a number of ways to look at ourselves and at Jesus. Each addresses a different aspect of life. Especially during this time of transition before the new year, it is important to tend to all of these people in our congregation and to all of those same traits in ourselves, which exist in us at different points, since we are all at different points in our journeys. The reading from Isaiah is a lead in to the psalm that we um, said as a, uh, the song of praise as our call of worship. And so let us continue to sing our praises. Um, we do not want to end as those for whom Oliver Wendell Holmes lamented, alas, for those who never sing and die with all of their music left in them. <laughs> so our next carol is a traditional melody from the Basque country, which is in the north of Spain and along the border with France. And as with the Catal Catalan people in that same region, um, the Basques have a very strong cultural and national identity. Uh, some people have compared them in, in the British Isles to the Welsh and the Scots, who are sort of forced into uh, areas where they're, um, well, to be part of something that they don't feel so much a part of. But let's, let's stand, if we're able, and sing the angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, number Weissel was an important early hymn writer in Prussia, living mostly in Konigsberg. Although our hymnal shows that he wrote the next hymn in 1642, he actually died seven years before that. Um, so somebody, somebody didn't quite get that right. But either that or what I found was it was when he died was wrong. But anyway, it, it was translated into English, though, 200 years later by Catherine Winkworth, a pioneer in women's rights and education. And her translations were known for being polished, yet remaining close to the original. So this is Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates, number 127. <laughs>
we'll invite the choir up for an, to round out our carol sing this morning with another old melody. This one is from the 16th century. Andy Davis found this song in the International Book of Christmas Carols years ago, and the boys of Noel Sing McClear reworked it, reworked the English lyrics to more closely mirror the original Catalan format. So this is a, from that same region in northern Spain, between Spain and France, so choir. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks today that we are able to be here together in the presence of our beloved community during this season of celebration. Thank you also for the healing and hope which has come to us this week and for your strength and love in our lives. Because you are so ready to hear our prayers, and so willing to give us hope and healing. We ask that you bless these members of thy living body for whom we ask thy care. Prayers for all who face crises of life and health. Bless their families and all who care for them that they might find your comfort and presence in this time of suffering. For those families who have endured the loss of a loved one, be with them during these holidays and envelop them in your love as they move through their grief. For all who suffer from cancer and who carry the ongoing threat of cancer's recurrence and for their families and all who support them, give them peace and health. For all who are imprisoned, rightfully or wrongfully, that they might find hope and true justice, grant their families the courage and support they need. For our men and women in uniform throughout the world and their families, We ask for healing for all children who are suffering. Bless them and all families with healing and courage. For young adults and their parents that they might be given the help and guidance they need.
for all elders of our church community and of the world, that they might be loved, honored, and cared for. For all in the world whose lives are filled with the darkness of hunger, illness, homelessness, anxiety, poverty, or isolation, and for those who seek to help them. And for all who live amidst violence and the threat of violence, bring peace to their hearts, their homes, and their nations. Guide our community and world leaders to find the bridges they need to peace and world service and the means possible for healing our planet, that we become true stewards of the earth and of each other. And finally, dear God, grant that all people may hear together the song of joy and find their homes in the garden of justice and hope and that we may experience the fullness of life, which is your will for all, in the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. cannot give your thousands, you can give the widow's might for the least you will for Jesus will be precious in his sight. Let us give our morning offering, being as generous as we are able.
let's finish our morning of song with a melody from 18th century France, first published in 1855, which has become one of the most widely sung carols of the modern era, according to one source. Number 135, Angels We Have Heard On High, one of the great one to belt out. through this place, pour your spirit-filled words into our mouths so that we may journey beyond these walls as prophets speaking your truth. Help us be your disciples by showing your way to the world, companions in Christ's name. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.